Welcome back to Module 5 of our study of the TCPIP model based upon the textbook Computer Networking, a Top-Down Approach by Jim Caros and Keith Ross. In this course, we've been exploring the TCPIP model of network design in a top-down manner, starting with an introduction to the subject. We then started our study with the application layer. That layer provided the tools to allow applications to be distributed across the network. The example that most of us are probably most familiar with is the World Wide Web, which allows a client on one end to request information from a server on the other. That client is responsible for formatting the request in a form that the server will understand and then formatting the information received from that server in a manner that will display on the screen in a form that the user will understand. From there, we move down the protocol stack to the transport layer, which is responsible for moving the message sent by the application to the other end of the network to the destination process. This is referred to as end-to-end -end communication. The transport layer is primarily responsible for making sure the data that is received at the destination is the same as the data that was sent by the source. One protocol of the transport layer even guarantees that the bits get there and in the right order. You remember our discussion of TCP. Then we learned that the network layer provides a communication service between any two network hosts. Between the two hosts, datagrams travel over a series of communication links, some wired and some wireless, starting at the host, passing through a series of packet switches, that's uh, link layer switches and routers, and ending at the destination host. As we continue down the protocol stack from the network layer to the link layer, we will find how packets are sent across the individual links that make up the end-to-end -end communication path. We will find answers to several other questions in this module, such as how error detection and correction, multiple access, link layer addressing, and more is handled. As you can see from this slide, as a matter of fact, Let's begin with some important terminology. We'll refer to any device that runs a link layer protocol as a node. Nodes include hosts, router switches, Wi-Fi access points, whatever. We will also refer to the communication channels that connect adjacent nodes along the communication path as links. For a datagram to be transferred from source to destination, it must be moved over each of the individual links in the end-to-end -end path. As an example, in the company network shown at the bottom of figure 5.1, consider sending a datagram from one of the wireless hosts to one of the servers. This datagram will pass through six links. A Wi-Fi link between sending host and Wi-Fi access point. An Ethernet link between the access point and the link layer switch. Another link between the link layer switch and the router. A link between the two routers. An Ethernet link between the router and the link layer switch. And finally, an Ethernet link between a switch and the server. Over a given link, a transmitting mode encapsulates the datagram in link layer frames and transmits the frame into the link. Now you recall we've already described the various protocol data units, PDUs, at the various layers. Application layer message, transport layer segment, network layer datagram, and now we will be discussing the link layer frame. As we just saw in figure 5.1, the, 
The datagram is transferred over a number of links, and that might involve a number of different protocols. For example, Ethernet on the first link, possibly frame relay on intermediate links, and possibly 802.11 on the last link. Each of these link protocols provide different services, and they may or may not provide reliable data transport. Although the basic service of any link layer is to move a datagram from one node to an adjacent node over a single communication link, the details of the provided service can vary from one link layer protocol to the next. Possible services that can be offered by the link layer protocol include framing, Almost all link layer protocols encapsulate each network layer datagram within a link layer frame before transmission over the link. The process is much the same as the one we discussed during our study of the network layer. A frame consists of a data field in which the network layer datagram is inserted, including the network layers header information. It's just a string of bits to the link layer. And then it includes several header fields of its own. The structure of the frame is specified by the link layer protocol. We'll see several different frame formats when we examine specific link layer protocols later. Link access is another service. A medium access control protocol, it's abbreviated MAC, MAC. A medium access control protocol specifies the rules by which a frame is transmitted onto the link. For point to point links that have a single sender at one end of the link and a single receiver at the other end of the link, the MAC protocol is simple, or non existent for that matter. The sender can send a frame whenever the link is idle. When multiple nodes share a single broadcast link, we have the so-called multiple access problem. Here, the medium access protocol serves to coordinate the frame transmissions of the number of nodes that happen to be using that same link. A third service is reliable delivery. When a link layer protocol provides reliable delivery service, it guarantees to move each network layer datagram across the link without error. Remember that certain transport layer protocols, such as TCP, also provide reliable delivery service. Similar to a transport layer reliable delivery service, a link layer reliable delivery service can be achieved with acknowledgments and retransmissions. A link layer reliable delivery service is often used for links that are prone to high error rates, such as a wireless link, with the goal of correcting an error locally on the link where the error occurs, rather than forcing the end-to-end -end retransmissions of the data by transport or application layer protocol. However, the link layer reliable delivery may be considered an unnecessary overhead for low bit error links, including fiber, coax, and many twisted pair copper links. For this reason, many wired link layer protocols do not provide a reliable delivery service. Error detection and correction is another possible service. The link layer hardware at the receiving node can incorrectly decide that a bit in a frame is zero when it was transmitted as a one and vice versa. Such bit errors are introduced by signal attenuation and electromagnetic noise. You recall those definitions that we've had before. Because there is no need to forward a datagram that has an error, 
Many link layer protocols provide a mechanism to detect such bit errors. This is done by having the transmitting node include error detection bits in the frame and having the receiving node perform an error check. Remember that the Internet's transport layer and network layer also provide limited forms of error detection? The Internet checks some. Error detection in the link layer is usually more sophisticated and is implemented in hardware, not software. Error correction is similar to error detection, except that a receiver not only detects when errors have occurred in the frame, but also determines exactly where in the frame the errors have occurred, and then corrects those errors. Does that sound impossible? Well, maybe we'll find out how it's not. Figure 5.2 here shows a typical host architecture. For the most part, the link layer is implemented in a network adapter, also known as a network interface card, or NIC. At the heart of the network adapter is the link layer controller, usually a single special purpose chip that implements many of the link layer services, such as framing, link access, error detection, and so on. Therefore, much of the link layer controller's functionality is implemented in hardware. Until the late 1990s, most network adapters were physically separate cards, such as a PCMCIA card or a plug-in card fitting into the PC's PCI card slot, but increasingly network adapters are being integrated onto the host motherboard, the so-called LAN on motherboard configuration. Well, why don't we take a break right here? This is, we're just getting started. Let's not overdo it this first time. Get your thoughts together, look at your checklist, make a few notes, and when you're ready, come on back and we will start another video on this subject of the link layer of the TCP IP model.